Hi there, this is Indranil Singh from EDR Medeso, and in this video, we'll have a look into the wet steam model in the multiphase section of Fluent. Now, we'll discuss the application of this model, we'll uh, go through the setup, and we'll see what kind of options we have to uh, modify this model. So, for the demonstration, I have a D Laval nozzle prepared here, so it's a converging diverging nozzle which is a very standard test for these kind of applications. So we'll look at the supersaturation of steam as it goes through this nozzle. And really what this wet steam model has been built for is this supersaturation of steam. Now if we look at this under multiphase, we have wet steam model theory in the theory guide. So we can look at how it discusses the rapid expansion of steam and how it is important for design and analysis of steam turbines. So let's go through the setup here. So I can simply just select wet steam to enable that model. So once you do that, the material selection tab vanishes. So because wet steam model uses its own inlet fluid, which is a mixture of dry steam and water liquid, uh, you don't have the option to modify the fluid settings. So if you have any solid let's say in your model that you want to specify, it's best to do it before uh, you enable the wet steam model. So now that I have enabled the wet steam model, let's look at my boundary conditions. So I have a pressure inlet and outlet combination. So for pressure inlet, you have your usual uh, input quantities, but you'll notice there's liquid mass fraction and droplets per unit volume. Now you can specify this, and but it's best to keep in mind that the wet steam model is really applicable for a mass fraction of up to 0.2. So above 20% wetness, uh, it's not advisable to use this model anymore. Uh, now in this case, we want to see the condensation happening due to uh, rapid expansion. So we'll uh, put in zero for liquid mass fraction and hence zero for droplets per unit volume. And I have a certain, uh, so I have a totally dry steam coming in at, at a certain temperature here. So that's that's really what's important for this uh, boundary condition. And I've already ran the simulation here. So now we can discuss the results. So now before we discuss the results, it's best to uh, see what kind of options we have within this wet steam model. So what I'll do is I'll I'll go through this theory guide and we'll have a look. So when we talk about phase change, okay. So in phase change model section of the theory guide, we have certain assumptions that the sweat steam model theory makes. So for example, the condensation is taken as homogeneous, the droplets are assumed to be spherical and so on. Now, one of the biggest problems with uh, rapid expansion of steam is that uh, this wet steam uh, crosses to some, uh, goes into what's called a metastable state. Now, we have two equations of states that uh, influence, which is Vukalovic and Young. And Vukalovic equation of state is known to be good when extrapolating to these metastable states. And that is the default option influent. Now, again, you can change to Young uh, variable equation as well if you have that preference. And if you if you want to use the industry standard uh, material properties, you can use the RGP table. Fluid allows you to create your own RGP files so that you can import your own data into Fluent. So uh, to change the model, you have to type in the following command. So if I go here, so define model multiphase wet steam set your virial equation. So once you do that, you, uh, Fluent asks you to if you want to use Young's virial equation or else equation of a color which will be used, which is the default one. So you can change that. Again, there's one more uh, option that you can change here. So droplet growth rate is calculated by Hill's, uh, sorry, Young's droplet growth rate formula, but you also have Hill's equation for droplet growth rate available if you prefer that. So to change that, you can type in the following command, define models, multi-phase wet steam set droplet growth rate. So if I click that, it will ask me if I want to use Hill's formula. If not, Young's formula, which is the default, will be used. And you have certain parameters that you might want to change for that formula. So that's the kind of uh, changes you can make to this wet steam 
model. So now we can finally look at the results. So under the results section, you have your usual pressure and temperature profile. So I can show you the temperature profile here. Now, what I've also done is I've ran the same model using the same material without any condensation happening. So what we can do is we can compare the results side by side. So if we look at the model without any condensation, as steam goes through, there's a gradual decrease in temperature, as you can see. But with the wet steam model engaged, we can see that the pressure, sorry, temperature drop is sudden and it's certainly uh, more cooler in this region, but then it starts to, uh, temperature slightly increases in this part of uh, the nozzle near the outlet, which is certainly different from the condensation case. And really what that means is that we see some nucleation happening here. Now wet steam model has its own specific result section. So if we go on wet steam, we can look at the liquid mass fraction. So if you keep in mind that we, uh, through the inlet, we had a dry steam coming in. So it's the liquid mass fraction is zero in that region, but towards the end, we can see the mass fraction increasing. We can also see the droplet nucleation rates which occurs somewhere about this region where the nozzle starts to diverge. Uh, we have more quantities like droplets per unit volume as well. So we can see that. Now to really compare the difference in results between the condensation case and the one I ran without any condensation, uh, what we can do is we can look at some plots. So if we if we compare, so, so along this wall, if we compare, say, pressure profile, as you can see, it's uh, this is the pressure profile when we have condensation. So about this region, it kind of bumps up a little bit. Now I can load my pressure profile for the case where I stopped the condensation from happening. So if I load that and I plot that pressure profile right next to it, so I can see during no condensation, we have this uh, gradually decreasing pressure. And which is, so in the beginning, it's quite similar to, uh, for both cases, but at this about 0.1 position downstream of the inlet, we can see a pressure deviation for the condensation case. For condensation case, we can see the temp uh, pressure increasing. Uh, now we can also see that this difference in result uh, when we look at the temperature at the wall profile. So if I plot temperature, both for the condensation and not condensation case, uh, what we see here is at about the same, 0.1 distance downstream of the nozzle, we can see there's a difference in temperature. So before that is more or less the same, but after that, it, uh, after 0.1, it, we can see that it slightly bumps up for condensation case. So the wall temperature increases in case of uh, condensation happening. So we can see, we can see the supersaturation of steam and this sort of delay in condensation process. Uh, so, you know, that, that's basically our wet steam model working. So uh, hopefully that was helpful in understanding the use of wet steam model and what kind of results it gives us and what kind of applications we can use it for. Thank you for listening.